So let's you know talk about Mobius years later. And I know I know people is gonna tell me that I've talked about it before, but I just want to you know just sit here and you know while I got the time on my hands before my you know third oldest nephew comes down uh, for a day and a half because his parents are gonna go see Alanis Morissette in Concord because uh, she's on uh, that's where her tour is stopping tonight. Uh, anyway. You know, I just want to, you know, take my, t you know, just take my time, you know, while I, you know, <laughs> wait for him to show up, or at least do this before he shows up. Uh, just talk about Mobius years later, and, you know, talk about how, you know, I, I think we have to admit how, you know, ambiguous and uh, it was for ambiguous, um, um, basically, innov I, I wouldn't say innovative, but basically ambiguous and um you know thought provoking if you will um the story was by ken penders because you know let's be honest we had seen a lot of shows you know animated live action as well as read a lot of comics that basically will always give us a glimpse into the future now when it comes to television you know animated or live action they usually wait until uh, more than likely the final episode or whether or not or or if they have to if they have to they kind of give us a glimpse of it like in the middle of the se season season uh, the middle of the final season or the middle of the series you know they'll usually give us a glimpse of more of more than likely what could be or potentially could be um, but they usually most times save it for the end a good example of that uh, recently was My Little Pony Friendship is Magic with The Last Problem where we got a look into future Equestria um, basically many moons, many years um, after uh, the uh, after the two-part finale uh, two-part uh, ending of the end um, final battle with the villains. You know, so you know, that that's a good example right there. Another one, um, according to some, is Parks and Recreation. You know, you know shows like you know show, uh, show, shows like that, as well as in comics. You know we get a glimpse sometimes. Whether it's part of a story arc or it's to kind of give us an idea maybe of what the future may look like. You know if things go a certain way, uh, mostly positive. You know comics like X Men, Spider Man, Superman. You know ba uh, Batman, Wonder Woman. You know the list could go on. You know uh, you know Avengers. You know. Iron Man, you know, Black Widow, Captain America, you know, the list could go on of, you know, comic books where we've got a glimpse into the future, either it's towards the comic book's, you know, lifespan, or it's in the middle of its prime to kind of give us, you know, an idea of what the future may or may not look like, depending on a certain outcome, whether it's a positive one or a negative one. And when Mobius years later... Like I said, with, with Ken, it was a very ambiguous, very uh, thought-provoking like uh, story arc that he went with originally because he basically what he did is um, at first, okay, depending on how you view this, at first, from what I understand, Ken Penders wanted the Mobius years later story arc that he had originally come up with to be basically... Uh, the true canon, the true continuity of you know of the you know of the of the comic of the Sonic comic book continuity that we were already reading. He wanted this to be you know the future that we were going to get, or at least you know at first we were going to get, and then you know we were probably going to get something differently. That was his initial plan, but as we see, but. You know, for some, for most of us that read these issues, uh, we basically know that uh, the future got altered um, at the end of the, uh, I guess you could say, the first act that Ian had written. Now, Ian, uh, not Ian, but Ken had written. Ken Penders had written. Now, Ken, I think, originally wanted to continue it on his own to kind of basically establish that what we did see was going to be the future uh, except it had to be, you know, restored. Like something had to happen in the past, you know, to restore it uh, to its former glory. Because one of the main uh, plot points um, of that, of the first act of Mobius years later, was the fact that the uh, planet was self-destructing, and it was all because of what Eggman had done in the past, and you know, along with his, ba mostly along with his battles with Sonic. 
you know, it was, it was basically the damage to the, you know, the atmosphere and the environment of the planet was causing it to break apart, was causing it to self-destruct. And then on top of that, you, you know, you add in what Knuckles did to kind of make things as, you know, make things in a way that they should be, as well as finally, you know, obliterating Eggman, according to, you know, how Ken Penders put it, you know, that didn't help either. So the main story plot was to go back in time, or at least find a solution, and maybe, and basically that solution being going back in time, and basically preventing whatever uh, catastrophic event, you know, would lead to the potential falling apart of the planet. Now, unfortunately, Ken didn't have time, or Ken wasn't able to, as I should say, um, wasn't able to finish it the way he wanted because, you know, he had left the book, he was let go, depending on how you view it, and Ian Flynn came on board. And Ian Flynn, of course, one of his main goals was to clean a lot of things up, make sense of some things, and he decided one of his first stories that he wanted to do was to basically bring resolution to the 25 years, a later portion of Mobius years later. So the second act basically served as that conclusion. We find out that because of Sonic's actions, certain things occurred that everyone from Tails to uh, Lala Sue, uh, in a way, to um, uh, basically Knuckles, but we don't find this out until the end, uh, along with even some of the antagonists like, like Linda and Shadow and all that, and even Sally, as we find out, who... Uh, who we find out in the story reluctantly married Shadow for, you know, for peaceful reasons, or at least try to attempt peaceful reasons, but with, through the marriage. You know, they were all aware of what had happened in the past. They had, oh, not past, but in the previous timeline. They were all aware of that to some extent. Tails more so than anyone because he had protected his family uh, from the changes that were occurring. So... You know, Ian Flynn decided basically was his one of his first stories was to bring resolution to it, and he did by basically having Lala Sue in the end trap Shadow and re trap Shadow, basically prove herself as a guardian. Finally, uh, reveal that Knuckles was pretty much in on what was going on, but didn't want to reveal his cards just yet until the time was right. And of course, in the end, reunite Sonic with Sally and. Yeah, that was it. But the one thing Ian always liked to do in his stories, even now, is you know, show that there were consequences to certain actions. And the consequence to Sonic going back in time and trying to fix things, unbeknownst to him, you know, the fact that when he was trying to fix things, things got, you know, interrupted or whatever the case may be. Um, the consequences were he had lost his children. His children were gone, you know, as he knew them. Um, basically, Lala Sue, her memories were kind of, you know, mixed up. Like, she remembered a previous life, and now that was fading away, being replaced by this new life. Things like that. You know, so you had these, you had these moments, basically. You had these, um, moments, uh, within, uh, these moments within the story of consequence, I was, I'm trying to say, moments of consequence within the story that were caused because of what they were trying to do in an attempt to fix the future from becoming what it was in the original Ken Pender's uh, story. And then we, and then we fast forward to a Sonic Universe arc, Mobius years later. Mobius years later. And this, in a sense, is a, it's kind of like a silver story. It's a silver story in a sense, but not really. It's more of a you know, conclusion properly to the, I guess you could say properly to the whole Mobius years later um, story arc. Because here it takes place five years later. Um, you know, Sally and Sonic are remarried. They have kids. Um, but there's, you know, basically the remnants of Shadow's regime still out there trying to uh, retake the throne and free him. Um, to, you know, basically get control over the kingdom and the world again. And in the long run, what happens is that, you know, King Shadow is freed, but basically um, King Shadow wants to, you know, exact revenge. He wants revenge 
for um, for what happened to him and to his you know his state to his to, you know basically he wants revenge. What I'm trying to say is nearly had a brain fart there. I do apologize. Uh, he wants revenge for what happened to him, and the best way to do it is to unleash the combined fused version of Tikal and Chaos called Tikalis, if you will. Oh, to call, yeah, to call us, which is basically chaos, but it's infused with, um, with to call us power. And you know, this is a little too much for even Linda. She's like, "Are you crazy? You know, the, the, you you want to do you want to unleash her? Are you out of your mind?" And the best way he could shut her up is say, "You questioning me?" He takes basically this wristband that she and the other legionnaires had that kept them in the timeline. And just takes it off her, and what happens? She gets erased. She gets erased from the timeline because of the fact that she's not supposed to be there. She's supposed to be in another timeline. He basically kills her because he doesn't want no interference. Uh, but long story short, his plan backfires because not only does he do, not only does he finally do get defeated by uh, Linda, not not Linda, but by Lala Sue uh, again. Not only does he get defeated by a lot of Sue, but he, um, but basically, a uh, lot of Sue is able to use the power of the Chaos Emeralds, do the enchantment, and she's able to restore to call uh, the fused version back to her normal state. Um, and in the end, we ended up getting a new set of Freedom Fighters, and it's during this conclusion that not only do we uh, get to see. Um, the newer versions of Sonic and Sally's kids, which were named after the Sonic Underground characters, Manic and Sonia. But we also finally get to see Bunny and Antoine's kids. You know, we get to see them, Jock, Bell, and obviously this, as well as we also finally get to see, um, uh, once again, we finally get to see what I'm trying to say, uh, basically Miles and Mina's kids, Tails and Mina's kids, that being Sky and, um, that's a Sky and Melody, and apparently there's some teasing of relationships going on, <laughs> you know, there with Jock and Melody and possibly Sky and Bell. You know, I don't really know, but yeah, basically the conclusion was we're given a new group of Freedom Fighters led by Lala Sue, Sonic in a sense, but more I think in a mentor role, role if you will, but mainly it's led by Lala Sue. But, you know, the thing is, when I look at Mobius years later, and I look at the fact of what Ken originally envisioned, what Ian continued, and then what Ian concluded with, Mobius years later is a unique story arc, to say the least. I mean, when you look at the fact that when Ken, like I said earlier, you know, started it, he wanted it to be the established future. He wanted it to be the established, you know, uh, future of the already established continuity, but apparently, apparently, even though he had plans to continue it, you know, in his own with his, in his own vision, he was basically told by the editor, "Yeah, uh, you, we're going to put this little quote in there, stating of whether or not this is the true future, because we don't want any spoilers." And that's basically why you have that little caption asking whether or not. You know, this is the true future or it isn't. You, you get what I'm saying? And, or you get that panel with Sonic and Tails and Knuckles and the Chaotix, separate panels and all that at the end, you know, kind of questioning whether or not this is the true, that was the true future or it wasn't. And then you have Ian Flynn come on board, conclude it and everything. Um, not really come out yet, but he does kind of later on before, or before, while he's working or while the, yeah, yeah, he comes out a little after, and while he's working and it's being published uh, during the final portion of it, you know, he does later on come out and then kind of basically say that, yeah, what Ken said about Moby Issues later, that's that's not true, guys. Um, that's that's an entirely alternate future. That's like a possibility, but it's not the true future. Even though Ken had gone on record and said it was the true future. You know, or in his eyes, it was the true future, and it's what he wanted to continue. But Ian decided after, you know, finishing it up for him, that, yeah, we're not going to look at that as the true future. We're going to look at that as an alternate future, an alternate dimension, you know, an alternate zone, if you will. 
and he wanted to basically I guess confirm this by having silver go into that er into that realm uh, looking for the potential traitor to that caused it, you know the destruction of of his world and everything so of his future anyway but yeah in the long run in the long run uh, again I'm gonna say this this is one of the most ambiguous ambi ambiguous ambitious and intriguing um, and thought-provoking arcs I think any you know writers you know could you know uh, come up with any original writer and any writers that continue it later on from the original writer could come up with continue and conclude but what are your thoughts what did you think of Mobius years later when it first came out? What were your thoughts when you heard this was going to happen uh, when Ken Penders was writing it? And what were your thoughts when Ian continued it and concluded it? Do you think, you know, both have a point to the argument that, you know, Ken feels this is the legit future and is meant to be, the, you know, is the legit future and is meant to be that way? Or do you agree with Ian and this is a possible future, if not an alternate reality set in that timeline what are your thoughts comment down below live chat during the premiere check me out on patreon at brian warmer bw rosas so let's check me out at bw rosas discussion and all your favorite audio podcasts except the uh, pandora as well as check me out on bw rosas on vimo for some content there you can't get here uh, as well as check me out at teespring for some merchandise down below so till next time guys god bless take care i am out